Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a video about the plane that has become the most famous, but also at the same time, the least flown plane in the world, the Boeing 737 MAX. Yes, she is finally back. The MAX is back and now legally recertified and approved to return to service following an almost 20 month long grounding period. What has happened? What changes were made to the plane to get her recertified? What economic loss did all of this pose so far? And what does the 737 MAX have to do with performing a wheelie with your bicycle? Those are some of the questions we'll look into in this video. So let's get started. Okay, when it becomes available and looks like you get a chance of getting in, we'll start bringing you that way. Otherwise, hold where you are for now. In late 2011, Boeing announced that they are planning on modernizing their all-famous 737 series, of which more than 10,000 have been built and flying since 1967. And as their biggest competitor, Airbus, announced the modernization program, of their 8020 family called NEO in 2010, Boeing had to step up their game. Now comment below, what does NEO actually stand for? Now Boeing, on the other hand, was not intending on designing a new airplane. Their new versions were based on the same iconic structural design of the older 737 models, but the 737 MAX models were to be fitted with modern technologies and newer, bigger CFM LEAP engines, which have a lower fuel consumption, lower emissions, and are quieter. What's not to like about that? When the 737 MAX went on sale, it was available in two versions, the MAX 8 and the MAX 9. So the first delivery of the 737 MAX was a MAX 8, which had its inaugural flight with Melindo Air in May 2017. Now, Boeing's modernized 737 fleet, also known as the new engine family, was expected to pose a serious competitive product to the 8020 Neo family. Now, as of December 2020, around 4,477 MAX versions have been ordered, of which 414 have been built and delivered so far. For comparison, airplanes of the 8020 Neo family, which were put into service 16 months earlier than the 737 MAX, got ordered almost 7,500 times and over 1,600 units have been delivered so far. 1,600 planes in 16 months? You can do the math. <laughs> now, with the start of the deliveries of the Airbus Neo planes in early 16, Boeing had to certify the not yet FAA-approved 737 MAX as quickly as possible in order to not lose new and long-term customers and wanted to catch up with the Airbus numbers of the Neo sales. Roughly a year later, after the first delivery in October 2018, Lion Air Flight 610, a 77 MAX, with 189 people on board, crashed into the Yava Sea, northeast of Jakarta, Indonesia. Five months later, in March 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, yet again a 77 MAX 8, this time with 157 people on board, crashed near the village of Bukan in Ethiopia. Sadly, there were no survivors in both crashes. But throughout the investigation, it got clear that there is a direct link between the new software of the MCAS and the crashes. Now, more about MCAS in a minute. Now, as soon as this information went public, all 737 MAX versions got grounded by almost every aviation authority around the world. Now, because of this worldwide grounding, Boeing was not able to deliver their brand new airplanes, so they had to store them on their premises. And in December 2019, the production of the 77 MAX came to a complete halt since they ran out of storage space. Okay, now let's understand the basics of the MCAS system. Now, if you compare the Airbus 8020 to any 737 regarding the landing gear height, you see that the 737 is much lower to the ground than any A320 family member. Now, there are some benefits that come with this design, but there are also some drawbacks too. Now, one of the big disadvantages is that the engines which were mounted 
underneath the wings are strictly limited in size, especially when coming in for landing. Now this limit was exceeded by the new CFM leap engines, so the engineers at Boeing decided to mount the new engine slightly in front of the wings. So the size and the placement of the new and more powerful engines altered the overall aerodynamic characteristics of the airplane substantially. At a high angle of attack, it was now much more likely to reach an unstable condition and to stall because the much bigger engine cowling started to generate a significant amount of lift itself. And if you added power, it would cause the plane to pitch up even further. So imagine you would fix the plane to a wall at the center of gravity. So in a former 737, where the engines were mounted under the wings, so they were to be closer to the center of gravity. Now you added thrust, meaning the plane had a tendency to slightly pitch up. As a pilot, you would then push slightly against the yoke to keep it down and maintain a level flight. Now to get a better understanding of it, picture yourself on a bicycle carrying a backpack full of stones. Now, wouldn't you say that the center of gravity runs roughly through the middle of your bike? Now, let's now perform a wheelie. So you pedaling is like powering up the engines. The bike, hence the plane, tilts or pitches up. You then push down on the handlebars to bring the forward wheel back on the ground. In the plane, you pitch down. Now, just hold that thought. So let's do the same thing with the 737 MAX with the engines mounted ahead of the wing and even more power output. So the pitching up momentum and the forces are much higher than on all the 737 models. So in our bike example, you are more or less on the same bike. You just got stronger legs now, but your backpack full of stones is clipped to the luggage rack shifting the center of gravity further back. Now, let's say you were already in a wheelie position and you suddenly have to add more power. You'll pitch up even faster due to the increased power and especially because of the aft position of the center of gravity. Does that make sense? Now, as a pilot, you would counteract that by pushing the yoke forward to lower your pitch and angle of attack. And this is where the MCAS comes active. MCAS stands for Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. Now, basically translated, I am a system that monitors your maneuvers and if a parameter is augmented, meaning too big or reaching a set limit, I will counteract by taking control. So it is designed to automatically trim the nose down and therefore reduce the angle of attack if the airplane were about to reach critical attitude parameters, such as the approach to stall attitude. On your bike, you'll fall backwards and a plane would roll over either wing. Please understand this is very basically speaking here. But how does the system know it is reaching such parameters? by the use of the AOA, the angle of attack vein. The AOA sensors are small little veins mounted on the forward part of the fuselage, which measure the angle between the oncoming air and the wing presented to that airflow. If the angle between the airflow and the wing gets too big, the air can't flow lamina over the wing, meaning the flow detaches reducing the wing's lift force until the wing stalls. And prior to that happening, MCAS trims the nose down to lower the angle of attack, regain speed and lift over the wing. It's similar to any stall recovery procedure. Pitch down, wings level and add power. Sadly, in the two fatal crashes, the investigation showed that a faulty AOA vein delivered wrong inputs to the MCAS, which in return triggered a continuous nose down trim and put the airplane into a dive, which the pilots were not able to recover from as the MCAS was programmed to be able to override manual inputs when it detected a supposedly critical situation. 
When the possibility of human error was investigated, authorities found out even though MCAS was able to directly interfere with the flight controls, Boeing did not mention it in their flight crew training manuals and did not include this topic in the pilot training for the MAX versions. It is being said that Boeing wanted to increase the attractiveness of their new models by providing an airplane family that does not require airlines to invest in additional pilot training. Now, the investigators assume that in both crashes, the pilots did not know the characteristics of MCAS, and some news reports even state that some pilots who flew on the MAX models did not even know what MCAS was. Sadly though, these two crashes could have been prevented by the use of these two guarded switches, the stab trim switches. As mentioned earlier, the MCAS automatically trims the stabilizer nose down, so by turning both stab trim switches to off, the pilots would have regained manual control over the trim by using the trim wheel left and right of the throttles. Now the worst part about it is this manual pitch trim procedure was applied by a Lion Air crew just a few flights earlier on the accident aircraft, but no one suspected a faulty AOA probe leading to the MCAS system going haywire. Therefore, the primary focus during the recertification process was on redesigning the MCAS software, new 77 MAX rolling off the production line, as well as the over 400 stored airplanes will have to be equipped with new wiring and redesigned software, which will take roughly a week to install and update. In addition to that, airlines have to ensure that their pilots attend FAA-approved trainings that deal with the MCAS and the problems that led to the two crashes. So on the 18th of November 2020, 630 days after the grounding, the FAA officially announced the recertification of the 737 MAX models. Now on the 9th of December 2020, the Brazilian airline Gol was the first airline to reintroduce the 737 MAX to service while ensuring that passengers who did not feel safe on the plane will be booked on flights operated by another aircraft type. And a few weeks later, American Airlines was the first airline to reintroduce the MAX to the domestic American service. Boeing was charged with a fine of $2.5 billion, which is peanuts compared to the $18 billion, which is their estimate economical loss and the biggest crisis they had to endure in their 104 year history. It makes me sad to see that Boeing, a company that has achieved so much success since its existence, Building safe and reliable, beautiful planes took such a massive financial hit with this program and its related consequences. But what makes me even more sad is the corporate greed with any company. This relentless war on just making more and more profit and undermining flight safety. It's not just Boeing to blame, but also the FAA. I don't care who paid who just to get things certified quicker to keep up with Airbus. The airline industry has always been cut and thrust. But when recognized and renowned companies start cutting corners at the cost of flight safety, then this industry will no longer be the safest way of traveling. Anyone involved should have known better. Whatever you do in aviation, as a pilot, flight attendant, or an engineer. Don't rush it, take your time, make good decisions, and carry on. That's it for today. If you have any more questions or explanatory notes regarding the whole 77 MAX topic, feel free to use the comment section below. And please let me know what other topics you would like me to do a video on. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, and perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning, wishing all the best, your Captain Joe.